Okay, so the classic British fish and chips, and just a quick note on the potatoes. When you're going out and you're buying these, um, it's best to buy a variety that works well for frying. Now, with regards to the quantities, I normally work on one medium to large potato per person. Begin by peeling the potatoes, and then we want to cut them into thick chips. You definitely don't want anything that's kind of thin fries here. They want to be nice and thick, so get those cut up, and then just pop them in a bowl of water just to stop them discoloring. Now, once you've cut them up, let's go over to the sink, and we're going to give them a good rinse under cold running water. And you want to do this for a couple of minutes until the water runs nice and clear, and we've rinsed all of the starch off the potatoes. Bring a large pan of water up to the boil, tip the potatoes in, and we're gonna simmer these quite rapidly until the potatoes start to break up. Now, the further you can let these go without them turning to mashed potato, the better. Gently lift the potatoes out of the water. I'm gonna drain these on a wire cooling rack, but you could do it in a colander. Let these cool down at room temperature, then we're gonna pop them in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour. The cold environment in the fridge is gonna help these chips dry out. Now the potatoes are gonna be ready to fry when the outside is nice and dry. So in a heavy based deep pan, I've got vegetable oil, no more than a third full, that's been heated to 130 degrees Celsius, 265 degrees Fahrenheit. Carefully lower the potatoes into the oil. Now, primarily that temperature is going to drop when the cold potatoes go in there, so bring that temp back up. Now, just remember, these have already been boiled. They're already cooked. So the purpose of this cooking stage is to give them a nice, crispy coating around the outside without any colour. We don't want these turning golden at this stage. Once we have that coating around the outside, again, we can carefully lift them out, pop them back onto a wire cooling rack. We're gonna leave them out at room temperature. And then again, we're gonna pop them in the fridge for another 45 minutes to an hour until they've cooled off and they're nice and dry. While they're drying off in the fridge, we can get on and we can prep our tartar sauce. Now, first up, I'm gonna make my own mayo. Now, if you wanna use shop-bought, that's absolutely fine, but I've got one egg yolk in the bowl. I've added a sprinkle of salt and one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. To that, I'm adding a squeeze of lemon, probably about half a lemon there, and now I'm gonna start whisking this. Now, I'm using electric whisk. You could use an immersion blender, or you could do it by hand with a whisk. And I'm gonna bring all of the ingredients together in the bowl and then slowly start to add vegetable oil. You could use another oil. Um, I prefer neutral oils because I don't think they're as strong as something like olive oil, but you can experiment, find out what you like. Now, as you add the oil slowly, as I said, add it slowly, you will see that the ingredients start to emulsify and it becomes silky and smooth, but not thick just yet. As the mixture begins to thicken, you can increase the speed that you add the oil. Keep whisking, and this is gonna get thicker and thicker. I added around 300 mils of vegetable oil to this in total. And this is the thickness or texture that I'm looking for for the mayonnaise. I don't want anything that's too tight. And now we can simply get this into a container, pop a lid on it, and pop it in the fridge. Okay, so on my chopping board, I've got a good handful of parsley. I'm gonna add 30 grams of gherkins. That's about four cocktail-sized gherkins. 30 grams of capers, that's about two tablespoons. And 30 grams of diced onion, that's also about two tablespoons. The most important thing is that you've got equal quantities of each. To that, I'm gonna add five grams or one teaspoon of green peppercorns. They're the peppercorns that you buy in a jar that come in a brine. This is optional, but it really gives this tartar sauce a nice, a nice kick. And as you can see, I'm just chopping everything together on the board. Of course, you could use a, a blender if you wanted to. Then we're gonna get that into a bowl and we're gonna bind it with the mayonnaise. We don't wanna to add too much here. We want this to taste of all of the different vegetables we've got in there and not just of mayonnaise. Give it a try and then you can adjust the seasoning. You may need to add just a touch more lemon or a touch more salt. And that is the homemade tartar sauce done. Okay, so now it's time to knock up the beer batter for the fish, and in a bowl, I'm gonna combine 50 grams or a third of a cup of plain flour, 
50 grams or a third of a cup of rice flour, seven grams or one heaped teaspoon of baking powder and a good pinch of salt. To that, I'm going to add my golden ale. Now you can use any ale you like, but I'd steer clear of anything too dark. Now I've used about 200 milliliters here or just under one cup, but you want to aim for a batter that's just a little bit thicker than cold oil. And now we can leave that batter to one side to rest at room temp for about 30 minutes. Right, now it's time to cook this dish and bring all of these elements together. Okay, I'm using cod fillet here. You could use any white fish. I've taken the skin off, I've removed the bones, and now I'm gonna generously season both sides of this fish and leave it to sit while we cook our chips. We're gonna reheat our oil in that pan to 180 degrees Celsius. It's important that we don't let the temperature go too far above that. We want the chips and the fish to spend long enough in the oil that they develop a nice golden color and a thick crunchy crust. If they cook too quickly at a higher temperature, they just won't have that right crunch that we're looking for. These chips took about eight minutes to get to this golden stage. We're gonna take them out, pop them back onto a wire rack. And here you can see where all of the nooks and crannies have been filled with the oil. They're fried and they've gone that lovely deep golden color with a really nice crispy exterior. Right, we'll keep these warm in an oven that's been preheated to 120 degrees Celsius, 250 degrees Fahrenheit while we cook our fish. Right, grab yourself a baking tray, lightly dust it with flour, pop the fish fillet on there, and we're just gonna lightly coat this in the flour. It's gonna help the batter stick to it. Now for a quick batter bath, just pick the fish fillet up, push it through the batter a couple of times, and then carefully and slowly lower that fish into the oil. Now you can carefully turn this over in the oil a couple of times, but as soon as it's gone golden, it took about seven minutes in my case, you can lift that cod fillet out carefully and pop it onto the wire rack with your chips. And this is exactly what we're looking for, a nice deep golden brown color with a lovely crispy and crunchy crust. Okay, we'll give this a whirl. Oh, that's so crispy. Huh? Oh wow, try a chip. It's really, really nice. The cod's super crispy, but still lovely and succulent and tender inside and moist. The chips are lovely and crispy and you've got a proper potato layer in there. Mmm. Mm. Let's give the cod a go with some of the uh, tartar sauce. Mm. The tartar sauce works really, really well. You've got the brininess from the capers and the gherkins and a bit of a punch coming through from the peppercorns. That's great. Mushy peas next. Mm. Mm. Still got some texture in there. Nice with the vinegar kicking through. By the way, the recipe for that will be in the description. Okay guys, that's it from me today. Don't forget to keep me updated over on Instagram. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.